Okay, hello again. Um, hopefully you've done that online experiment and you've created an Excel graph. Um, let's have a look at what that graph means. So the graph looks something like this, where on the x-axis, oh, sorry, the x-axis, we've got the extension plotted and we've use the units meters and on the y-axis we've got the force plotted and we've used the units newtons. Now this is a sketch of what your graph will look like. I haven't put values in because your values will be different. Hopefully you've all chosen slightly different values for your spring constant. And remember a high spring constant means the spring is very stiff and it will not stretch so far. So let's just look at this graph to start with. Um, without any values. I asked you to work out the gradient. And if you did that, I'm hoping that you noticed that the value for your gradient is equal to the spring constant. As long as we've got the force on the vertical axis and the extension on the horizontal axis, this gradient will be equal to our spring constant. What that means is, for example, if I had a second spring that was much stiffer, it was much more difficult to stretch it, then it would have a higher spring constant, which means it would have a higher gradient. OK, so it would have a steeper line. OK, so this is a stiffer spring. We could do the same experiment with that stiffer spring and we could plot the data and we would end up with a steeper gradient. Now, one thing that's not very perfect about um, this particular way of doing it is that because we're not using real springs, um, we can't overload the spring. OK, so I'm going to show you what happens when we overload the spring on a graph. OK, so uh, this is what happens when we've overloaded the spring. We actually stretch it, OK? So let's just think about what the graph is really representing here. As the force increases, the extension increases at uh, with a linear relationship, OK? This is a straight line, which means if I double the force, I double the extension. Double it again, double the extension again, OK? But there is a point at which the graph stops being a straight line. And at this point here, we start to get really big extensions. So you can see that for the next little bit of force we increase, the extension, well, that's a big change in extension. OK, we were getting little bits of extension before. Now we get a big bit. The next little bit of force gives us an even bigger bit of extension. So we can think of this as we are gradually stretching the spring. If I'm applying a constant change in the force, the spring is getting gradually lengthened along this extension line. And then there comes a point where a little bit of force causes a big extension and off it goes. And the spring gets stretched uh, really, really far. Now, what would what would the spring look like? Well, when we unload the spring, we take the, uh, the load off the spring, the spring would not go back to its original size and it would be permanently deformed. So it would be plastically deformed. OK, um, so we can work this out from a graph. And therefore, if we've tested a spring, if we've got 100 identical springs with the same spring constant and the, 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 the same length, then um, we will. Uh, and are made of the same material, then we will be able to predict when this happens and we can make sure that whatever we're using that spring for, it, it doesn't get overloaded. OK, because before this point when we unload the spring it just goes back to its original size after this point when we unload the spring it will come back to a permanently stretched state so here's some things you need to know we call this um sometimes it's known as the elastic limit but it's also known as um 
the limit of proportionality. And as you move on to the AQA scheme, um, the AQA course next year, uh, you're going to need to know it as the limit of proportionality. OK, but more is widely known as either of these, the elastic limit or the limit of proportionality. This is the uh, limit that the spring can be can be extended um, and remain elastic. And remember, elastic means that it will return to its original shape. So we've got this elastic region here, which is linear. And um, it's proportional. OK, so proportional means that if we change the force by some factor, we change the extension by that same factor. So elastic uh, returns to original shape. That includes the length. Plastic also known as inelastic. Unfortunately, we do have some terms which are um, the same. Plastic, plastic is also known as inelastic, which means um, that it doesn't return to its original shape or that it is permanently deformed, which means it's permanently out of shape. OK, and that's what happens after the elastic limit. So this is plastic above the elastic limit and it's elastic below the elastic limit. So you need to know, you need to be familiar with this graph as well. You need to be able to maybe measure off of a graph. You need to be able to measure, measure what the elastic limit is. You need to be able to describe this as being proportional and you need to be able to say that the material or the spring is elastic before it is stretched beyond its elastic limit. OK. So the elastic limit can be um, given as a force or it can be given as an extension as well. So if we needed to measure it as an extension, or give it as an extension, we would read it off of the extension axis. OK, but this is the point on the graph which it stops being a straight line. OK, so that's uh, the graphs and the um, investigation to Hooke's Law in a nutshell. I'm now going to move on to a little bit of maths for you. Right, OK, so for Hooke's Law, um, we've got a graph that we've drawn on Excel. Now, uh, in maths, hopefully you've learned this already, but if not, don't worry about it. The equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c. So you can uh, work out the equation of a straight line in maths using this formula. We use the same formula in physics because physics is what is what gives maths um, a reason, a purpose. So in Hooke's law, uh, we've got the y-axis. This is the one that goes up and down. We've got that that is the force. So that's F. We've got the x-axis, which goes along the bottom, is E for extension. And M in this uh, maths formula is the gradient. And we've got that the gradient is the spring constant. OK, and we use uh, symbol K to represent the spring constant in physics. So the equation for this line, the equation that tells the story of your spring is the same as this, but we just replace these letters with our physics letters. So Y is F, M is K, X is E, and uh, C, I haven't mentioned, C in maths is where the line crosses the y-axis, the y-intercept. Um, well, quite handily, because this is a directly proportional relationship, it crosses the intercept at zero. So because it crosses the intercept at zero, um, c is zero, and we can ignore it, because plus zero might as well not be there. So what we've got is f equals ke. Uh, in some textbooks, you might see f equals kx, um, I deliberately haven't done that because the new AQA course will use E for the symbol for extension. So F equals KE is Hooke's law as an equation. And this is an equation that you're going to need to learn. 
It's one of the equations for physics that you may be asked to recall in an exam. And we can use it to work out any missing factor. So if we don't know the spring constant, but we know uh, the extension we get for a given force, we can calculate it by rearranging the equation. If we know the spring constant and we know how much force we're applying to spring, we know how far it will extend. OK, so we rearrange the equation for E. If we don't know the force that's required, but we do know the spring constant, we know how long we want the spring to stretch to, then we can use this equation in its natural form to find the missing force. So we use it in the same way that we use all of our equations in physics. One caveat. Uh, one uh, thing that we need to understand is that this only works where it is a straight line, because this is the graph of a straight line. This is not the graph of a curved line. And so we can only use Hooke's law in the equation where the spring is below its elastic limit or the below the limit of proportionality. So what you might need to uh, do when you learn this equation is have um, that caveat written next to it. So F equals KE um, below the limit of proportionality. So if we remember that this works for the straight line part of the graph, then, then we're good. OK, and uh, it all works out if we use uh, the standard units for force, which are newtons, uh, for extension, which is meters, and for the spring constant, which is newtons per meter. OK, so um, the spring constant that, that we used on the simulation was given in newtons per meter. And as long as we're using base units, then they're going to work together nicely. Let me give you an example about how we might use this equation, and then I'll leave you with some further questions. OK, so this is the worksheet I'm going to give you. I'm just going to run through the first one as a worked example. So uh, question one has got that a spring has a spring constant of 7.5 newton meters. What force is needed to make the spring extend the following distances? Uh, and we're just going to do one A, 0.1. And it says assume the spring does not pass this elastic limit. OK, so that's brilliant. We know we can use F equals KE because it's below the elastic limit. So in this question, um, do we know what F is? No, we're being asked to find it. Do we know what K is? Yes, from here it's 7.5 newtons per meter. And the units are correct for this equation, so I don't need to change anything. And uh, for 1a, the distance is, or the extension is 0.1 meters. So we can write that down as well. And again, it's in meters already, so I don't need to convert it. Um, but look out for that. Sometimes extension is given in centimeters or even millimeters, and you will need to convert it if it's not in meters. I don't know F, so I'm going to write down the equation that I need to find F, and it's already in this natural form. So I'm going to write F equals KE. I'm then going to substitute the value for the variable. So K equals 7.5. K here is 7.5, and that's times E, which is 0.1. So I write 0.1. And then I get my calculator out and I do the calculation, um, put it in there, or maybe you do it in your head and you realise that this is 0 0.75. And because it's a force, it's in newtons. And if you're ever in any doubt as to the number of significant figures you need to use, it should be given in two significant figures if you're in any doubt whatsoever. So here we've, we've given this in two in two significant figures, which is fine, because that's what our answer was anyway. OK, um, and that's complete. We've got a final answer. It's rounded and it's in uh, the correct units. So that's how you do it. This is how I want you to show your workings. I want you to write down the variables that you know from the question and the one that you don't know. I then want you to write the equation out with the unknown variable as the subject. I want you to 
substitute the values and then I want you to calculate it and present the answer rounded with units. Final thing then, if you had to work out, for example, um, the extension, which we have in question two, then we will need to rearrange this equation. So we can rearrange the equation using algebra and we can say to leave uh, E on its own, making it the subject, we need to divide this side by K. And if we divide this side by K, we've got to divide this side by K. So E equals F divided by K. That's the, the proper way of doing it. But if you want to use the uh, triangle, you can. We've got K times E. So they go together in the bottom of the triangle. And we've got F is on the other side of the equation. So it goes at the top of the triangle. OK, and we can use this triangle as a reminder if we get stuck with the algebra. So if we're looking for extension, cover extension, and we've got F divided by K. If we're looking for K, cover the K, we've got K equals F divided by E. And if we remember the triangle, but we don't remember this, if we're looking for force, cover the force, and we've got force equals K times E. So we can use this, for example, to work out that E equals F divided by K, or that K equals F divided by E. So uh, use the triangle if needs be and work through the worksheet. Let me know what, when you're uh, done. Submit it online. Brilliant. Thank you. Good luck.